Hub feed. Hello there, and welcome to the Lock In Quiz. All of the fun of the trivia night down your local with, let's be honest, uh, quite a lot of key details different. Uh, I'm your host, Ivo Graham. We're encouraging you to play along with the quiz at home, but crucially also, we have three guests who will be guiding through five rounds of fact based fun. Now would be an extremely good time before we kick things off to grab pen, paper. Uh, you can follow us on social media. You can play along on Twitter and Facebook at My Ticket UK and put down your scores there. Let's meet the people you will be competing with. First up, it's comedian Phil Wang. Hello, Phil. Hello, Ivo. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, Phil. And this isn't our first quiz-based interaction of this uh, lockdown, is it? Not of this week, maybe, of Fortnite. Yeah. I mean, this has very much been the uh, meat and uh, vegetables of everyone's social life at the moment. Uh, it has been, specifically, in your case, in the round you did about uh, Oriental cuisine, mm. which I got naught out of five on. Yes, um, you have to match very... the Asian dish to the country of origin. Did you not get any, Ivo? I didn't get a single question right in that, Phil. It just made me feel hungry. How are you feeling <laughs> about being a contestant uh, this afternoon? It's um, well, it's what they call karma, isn't it? I'm getting my just desserts. Um, and Sorry, what do you think of the? Keep bringing food up. Oh, listen! It won't be the last appearance of our old friend Oriental Cuisine in this afternoon's quiz. Uh, it, it, I'll be honest. There's no question that one person playing is more likely to get right than uh, one of the general knowledge questions early doors. But let's not give too much away. Um, we're going to meet our next contestants now. Uh, that is Tom and Sam from the band Air. Hello, Tom and Sam. Hello. Hello, good evening. How are you guys getting along in this, uh, let's call it what it is, pandemic? <laughs> you know, we're all right, actually. Uh, it's nice to have some time away from the rest of our band mates. Uh, nice to have each other at the same time. Yes, yeah, so, especially for a nice quiz. Especially for a quiz. Now, I'm sat, as well as uh, several volumes of The Lonely Planet and several volumes of Winston Churchill's biography, uh, next to a big pile of Q magazines from the mid-noughties. Um, as today's musical guests, uh, were you fans of the Q magazine in the mid-noughties? I have to say, I never. I was too busy uh, buying match magazines uh, yeah, it was as all a kid. All about football as, as a kid, I'm afraid, Ivo. No time for honest. music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm at the house that I grew up in, and I've got a huge pile of match magazines upstairs. And if I'd known that those were the things that were going to impress you, this backdrop would be very different indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Bob Dylan when you've got, uh, um, I don't know, uh, probably Darren Huckabee. So let's crack on with <laughs> contestant number three. Uh, contestant number three uh, is actor and comedian Fiona Allen. Hello, Fiona. Oh, hello. How are you getting along? Yeah, I mean, okay. The first couple of weeks, it was um, nice and hot when I was eating breakfast outside, thinking, oh, my God, it feels like I'm on holiday. I feel like I'm in Cornwall. And then I got bored as everybody else. Yet the boredom is starting to set in a little bit, isn't yeah. it? And um, and I've got, you know, a family. I've got teenagers that lummox around and don't do anything in a crazy cockapoo. So, um, is the cockapoo out of uh, shot and out of uh, hearing for the next half an hour? It's, it's in another building. I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Because my news. cockapoo often sits on my head for no apparent reason because um, cockapoos are really badly behaved. So, no, it's not here. Don't worry. Many will know you from things like Smack the Pony and Happiness. Uh, but uh, as a huge Skins fan from back in the day, uh, I knew you as Maxie's mum alongside Bill Bailey. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about what that was like? Uh, that was really interesting, actually. <clears throat> I really enjoyed that. It was fun. And, uh, and, I, and my my teenage kids are still watching skins now it's it's up there as like they're quite proud of me for being in that nothing else but that no, no, no pride in any of your other endeavors apart from that no not interested at all do you think <laughs> do you think the victory over air and phil wang in the lock-in quiz uh, could be enough to win the respect of your children um uh, yes of course <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how you get along. We're going to move straight now into round one, which is five questions all under the familiar umbrella of general knowledge. Uh, now, contestants, do you have Sharpies and pads? Yeah. Please write your answers nice and big so that we can see them on the camera. So question one from our general knowledge round is, and it's a doozy, what is the most populous city in Scotland? Now, you're basically choosing between two cities here. Um, so question two, uh, this is for two points. 
also of immediate more value than the Scotland-based question. Which two dances are used as words in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Lovely. We all know and love the NATO phonetic alphabet. Alpha, bravo, Charlie. A little bit of showboating from me there. Um, and I've given away three <laughs> uh, words in the NATO alphabet which are not dances. So I've, I've narrowed it down there for you. Have you never done the Bravo before? It's a fantastic dance, that. Um, it's it's really an clapping. improv riff, which we just don't have time for. Um, <laughs> I, do the, I do the Bravo riff at 8 p.m. every Thursday night outside my home for the NHS. Uh, question <laughs> three. What Chinese dish, what yes. Chinese dish, and Phil, this may have been the question that I was teasing earlier. I'm already as, writing the answer down, Ivo. I'm already writing the answer down. Fried noodles. Would, I don't what it translates as fried Chinese. Why do I, how, I don't know? Oh, it, don't it, know. It, it, it is in Chinese, uh, Fiona, but you would recognize it on the takeaway menu. It's really terrific yeah. to have Phil essentially <laughs> doing my job for me in this. I mean, this is the most useful I'm going to be all quiz, so I'm gonna make the most of it. <laughs> yeah. That's okay, <laughs> that was helpful. I got confused on the question as to what it was trying to do. I get it, I, I know what it is. Well, I, I say that. <laughs> It feels like there's a lot of tension in this video conference already, and we're going to move swiftly on <laughs> to question four. Who voiced the genie in Disney's Aladdin? The the newer what, one. One would assume the original. Uh, the the the, and this is obviously very subjective, but I'm going to say the definitive genie in the original Aladdin. <laughs> question five. <laughs> there are five letters in Scrabble that have only one tile. Name them all, and it's one point per correct answer. So it's a it's a brutally disproportionate level of importance. This question, wow, okay. if you've spent your Wait. whole life Are we watching a, Aladdin, a it's yeah. a point for each film. Wow, God, God! If it's on the board, there's not another one coming out of the bag. I'll rephrase it. What are the five rarest letters in the English language? Without any further ado, I'm going to ask uh, the four of you to wrap things up as we move to the answers for round one. And the same goes for everyone watching at home. Uh, pens down. I was just going to add a letter. Oh, never mind. Fine. Fiona, just, this, is, this is the first episode of this quiz. I'm not going to stop you writing one more no, letter very quickly. I'm going to stick to the, It's fine. I failed on number five. It's my own fault. A deep, ingrained respect <laughs> for rules. <laughs> mm. uh, let's go through the answers for round one. The most popular city in Scotland is Glasgow. Oh, no. If you've ever been to the Edinburgh Fringe, it's hard to look past it, but obviously... Yeah, yeah, it was. That is a, <laughs> that, that is a temporary population. Uh, as opposed to Glasgow, which has a consistency all year round, which cannot be matched. <laughs> Question two. Which two dances for two points are used as words in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Foxtrot and tango. Phil, you've basically presided over this entire question from the start. So why don't you tell us all which Chinese dish translates as fried noodles? Uh, it is chow mein, although Yay! I was always taught chow mein. I didn't come across mein until I moved to the UK. Just a little extra trivia. It is a lovely bit of bonus trivia, and congratulations on not letting it impede you from getting the correct answer. Question four. <laughs> Who was the voice of the genie in what I think we've all agreed to be the classic version of Disney's Aladdin? Uh, and the answer is Robin Williams. And finally, we come to question five. Which five letters in Scrabble have only one tile? And the answers are J, K, oh. Q, X, and Z. Ooh. No! What Sorry, error has been some, made? I, I made oh some cross, cross out Z. I got made some cross. Just leave the sentence there, mate. You made some cross. <laughs> and what, um, what did you put instead of Z? Uh, we had Y and V in there as well. Yeah, I'd be Serious feeling pretty livid with my partner at this point. Um, Phil, how many did you get out of five for the Scrabbles? 
I got four out of five. I said V instead of J, which was stupid. A lot of people have been sucked into this V whirlpool. Um, well, why don't you, all of you, uh, hold up your answer sheets uh, so that we can check that you gave the answers you said you did and see what scores uh, you have got. Let's have a look, Phil. I've got there a, it is, I Glasgow, to... Tango, Foxtrot, Chow Mein, Robin. Robin. Oh, no, what's, I, I what have you put instead of Robin Williams? Robin Williams? And there's Robin Williams, and there are the uh, heartbreakingly... Oh. Um, near complete Scrabble letters. So, Phil, that's um, that's nine out of ten for you. Nine out of ten. Uh, Tom and Sam, let's have a look at what you got up to. It's the incorrect Edinburgh, and it's the Telltale V, and otherwise we're looking at a solid eight out of ten. Thank you very much, chaps. Fiona, let's see the damage. Edinburgh again, you hate to see it. I know. Massive fail. Um, and you're a couple of letters short on the Scrabble. Was was one of the ones that you didn't get, the one that you banned yourself from writing down because it was after the deadline? No, I just genuinely got that rest of it totally, totally wrong. Mm -hmm. So you've got seven for that. So at this early stage, Phil is in the lead. Um, we move on now to, what a delight, a visual round. Uh, or, or picture round, as they're more commonly known. Um, don't worry, you're not having to draw the pictures. You are looking at pictures of very famous people, but, and what a novel twist this is, it's photos of them before they were famous. Mm. Let's load up the cherubs. Question number oh, one. Oh, he looks exactly the same. All right, Fiona. Oh, God, I hope I get that right. Well, yes, of course. That's <laughs> what's known in the trade as vintage hubris from Alan. <laughs> Let's have a look at this person of note. Now I'm in the game. So this has taken us all the way back to black and white photography. But I should say, it's not that's not actually a, a clue. I think this person was born in the age of color photography. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a red herring. That's what I'm saying, the black and white photo. We move now to our third uh, celebrity. Picture number three. I... Here comes Fiona again with her famous certainty. I, okay, it's not going to last. Because <laughs> the first one I think I got wrong after all that. It's a theme in my life. Yay! No, I don't know. <laughs> Our fourth picture Our now, if you're all ready for it. One. Ooh, yeah, I think I know that. Fiona is ominously silent. Uh, I'm, because I'm not sure if it's between... I've got two people I'm not sure of. The, the lenient soul in me wants to let you write down both, but I'm going to have to insist on just the That's one. That's right. And our final picture in this round is this person, Angelic. And yet, in his adult life, a divisive figure. How many do you reckon you've got in this round, Phil? Three, if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> what about the boys from the Air? I think some of these end up being very controversial. Um, we, we don't mean it to be like that. Um, right. But we, some of them we didn't know, and so we just went off your clues. I'd say, when I say this person grew up to be a divisive figure, uh, I'd say a divisive figure, it, it's still the sort of lighter end of the spectrum. Um, well, that absolutely it, rules out our, <laughs> our stuff. <laughs> so let's go through the answers. Um, I uh, can tell you that the first picture was of a young Harry Styles. <gasps> oh, of course, I see that. I, oh, oh, come on. Did you like him? <sighs> Who did you put, Fiona? No. no I, it was so <laughs> Who did you put? It's, it's awful, and you're going to see it. Never mind. So the correct answer for number two was Anne Widdicombe. Damn right. I, I hear a little celebration from Phil. Question Brad three was a picture of a young... And from Fiona, sorry. Brad Pitt. Oh. There. Oh, <laughs> that was my first thought, and then okay, no. Who did you write then? Not. Number four was a picture of a young Halle Berry. Oh, I almost said Halle Berry. <laughs> <laughs> a miss being as ever as good as a mile, and number five. I really tied us all up in knots here. 
by referring to this man as divisive, but at the lighter end of the spectrum. I don't know what that means, but I was talking about Jose Mourinho. <gasps> oh, gosh. <laughs> Let's go through the scores. Phil, could you walk us through your five guesses, first of all, please? My first guess was question mark. My second guess, Anne Widdicombe, and the correct answer. My third guess, and correct answer, Brad Pitt. My fourth guess... A repeated question mark. Should have gone with Halle Berry. Um, but I was worried um, oh. that it wasn't Halle Berry and I, would have, I wouldn't have looked good. And uh, then uh, Nick Griffin at the bottom. A halfway Feels house like between a uh, dictator and Jose Mourinho. So it's two points for Phil there, but with the dignity of just not even having tried at two of them. <laughs> Tom and Sam, <laughs> hold your sheet up, please, and take us through your choices. So we opened with Harry Styles. And Correct. thankfully collected the points. Uh, a little smiley face for question number two. I don't think that was the correct answer. Uh, Prince no. William came in at number three. <laughs> we thought about Brad Pitt, and then we thought we'd have loved the idea of Prince William wearing that necklace as a young boy. Um, question four, Alicia Keys was my instinctive go-to, and incorrect, unfortunately. And finally, uh, the finale, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Which was again incorrect. Many apologies. And, and... Fiona, uh, you've got Phil with two points and Tom and Sam with just the one. Let's see how you got okay, along. Uh... Dying to know who you picked for number one. Oh, he totally hopeless. You know he looks exactly like Harry Styles, but he also looked, I thought, a little bit like Terry Christian. Oh no. <laughs> I was absolutely like, oh, it's definitely him. So I failed. So yeah, and then I got Anne Whittacombe, correct. Um, Brad Pitt, correct. Um Halle Berry, I scribbled out because I changed my mind, so that doesn't count. And I got Piers Morgan. You've got to say, you've provided a bit of a, a, a sort of Manchester skew by going for Terry Christian. Do you there for agree, one. though? Doesn't he look, he did look a bit like Terry Christian, I thought. Could have been. But you've got to say, at the end of the day, he looked more like Harry Styles. I know, I'm trying not to say that. I don't want, yes, okay, he did. So let's have the scores as they stand. Phil got two, which takes you up to 11 Fiona has overtaken Tom and Sam and is on nine and Tom and Sam marooned on eight. Round number three is a lovely nostalgic themed round, which today is guess the year. All we need you to do is guess the year in which the following events took place. So we're going straight in with question one for a point. In what year did the Eden Project open? Did Wikipedia go online? And was the film Shrek released? What I'll typically do with these questions is just discount two of the events immediately and try and remember when Shrek came out. <laughs> but you, you may have a more personal association with the Eden Project. Who knows? Question two, and I don't mind saying we're going a little bit further back with this. The Apple Macintosh went on sale for the first time. It was announced that GCSEs would replace O-Levels and The Karate Kid was released. Now, Phil, I don't want to play too much on lazy stereotypes, obviously, but uh, you're a bloody nerd. Do you know a lot about Apple Macintoshes? Oh, are they going to go on The Karate Kid? That was, my, that, was my, that was my clever twist. Okay, I was delighted right. with it. Well, just because... It'll almost certainly get cut. People do, do treat those two characteristics with equivalent weight for some reason. We move to question <laughs> three for a point. Uh, when did the first ever national lottery draw take place? When did Green Day release their third album, Dookie? And when did the TV show Friends air for the first time on NBC? Can you do multiple choice? Um, I can't do multiple choice, Fiona, I'm afraid. It's multiple clues, but it's a single answer with no options. Question four. In what year did the Apple Watch go on sale? Did William and Kate have their second child? That's the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. And was the James Bond film Spectre released? Hang on, isn't that the grown-up version of the guy in the last round? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful stuff. Uh, from just... I'm speechless at what a good callback that is. Question five. In what year did Richard Nixon resign as US president? Did Muhammad Ali and George Foreman fight out the rumble in the jungle? And did West Germany win the World Cup? How are you feeling about this round, Fiona? If you had to put a number on it, how many points do you think you've got? Uh, from this round? I think, well, I've written I don't know for one of them. 
<laughs> right. It was a great I mean, year, that. It was a really good year. <laughs> and I can't remember the year. That's because it was so great. So I think I think 2020 is going to be written off as a bit of an I don't know <laughs> year. Okay, now every good pub quiz needs a break in the middle, and we're no different here at the Lock In. So we're going to give our contestants a couple of minutes to grab a drink. And to keep you all entertained at home, here's a short video we're sure you'll enjoy. All I crave is a good pub feed. Welcome back to the lock-in quiz. Uh, let's reveal the answers to round number three. The Eden Project opened, Wikipedia went online, and Shrek was released in 2001. Ah, come on! Hard to tell if Phil is celebrating or is livid with himself. Furious! Yeah. Sorry to hear it, Phil. Okay. Perhaps you'll have done a bit better with question two. The Apple Macintosh was released, GCSEs replaced O-Levels, and the Karate Kid was released in 1984. Ah! Uh, mm. Question three, the first of a national lottery took place. Green Day released Dookie and Friends came out on NBC in 1994. Question four, the Apple Watch came out. William and Kate had their second child and Spectre was released in 2015. Yes, well done, Hammond. First bit of celebration to be heard there. And question number five, Nixon resigned. Muhammad Ali fought George Foreman and West Germany won the World Cup in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> I went completely off the um, football and I think yes. West Germany won Italia 90, didn't they? I don't so, know for certain. So we were out by a long way, but that's why. Very long way. Imagine Richard Nixon still trucking along in 1990. <laughs> 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 Um, so let's um, have a look at your uh, answers, please, and your scores for that round. Let's go in reverse order. Fiona, so 2000, a year out for Shrek Wikipedia and the Eden Project, two years out for the Mac, the GCSEs and the Karate Kid, an infinite distance from the correct answer for question three and question four. <laughs> and then question five, you put, oh, she got 1974. Yeah. Terrific But um, I'm afraid I've not done the best of rounds there. Never mind. That's absolutely fine, Fiona. Let's see how the boys from Air did. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's right. It's right. It's very wrong. So that's a two. <laughs> Nearly as far that's away fine. as don't don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you'd be walking out of here with more self-respect if you'd written don't know. Phil was one year out, as we heard, with Shrek Eden Project and Wikipedia. One year uh, out again. Oh no. Hence my Three years out for Friends, The Lottery and Green Day. Correct for Spectre, uh, The Second Child and the Apple Watch. And 12 years out for The Boxing, The Nixon and The West Germany. So that's one for Phil. It's still quite tight across the board. Phil 12, Fiona 10, Tom and Sam 10. So five each, that is, mate, just in case you haven't worked that maths out. <laughs> We're not dividing up your score. You were selected as a pair, presumably <laughs> on the assumption that you were weak as individuals. You know, it's a compliment to Phil and Fiona that they're backed to quiz solo. Okay, round number four is our music round. Uh, we will shortly be joined by a special guest who is going to play you their rendition of five famous songs on, as I'm sure we've all hoped, the stylophone. All you have to do is write down who the song is by and what the song is called. We want the artist and title, and so this round will be worth 10 points. Uh, so let's cut now to our guest, who is somewhere in the UK, ready to perform the five songs. Uh, please welcome Michael on the stylophone. Here he is. We focus not on the man, but on the instrument. Let's have <laughs> question number one.
truly an abrasive noise, but lovely to be able to watch the magic happening. Fiona, how are you feeling about uh, enjoying the stylophone in your life for the next uh, five to ten minutes? <laughs> well, it might be the time I take a break. Right. Good. It's just walk away from the quiz entirely, sacrifice any <laughs> possibility of winning. <laughs> Did everybody else think that was easy, that first one? Not easy, no. Not easy. Not easy. Well, let's see number two. Number two, I can tell you, I would say is a little bit easier. Michael, take it away with song two. <laughs> Fiona, you've got to be enjoying that at home. I love that because I think, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I just remember the Terry Christian fail. <laughs> oh, no. Is she going to write down another Mancunian icon? <laughs> I think I got this one right, actually. Question three now, Michael. <laughs> That was really good. I don't know the name of it, but I know it, and that was good. Well done. <laughs> let's crack on then. Since the mood in the room is good, let's enjoy a fourth song on the stylophone. Fiona Allen is back at the Hacienda and she's having a great time. And now for our fifth and final song, Michael, take it away. <laughs> Can you, are we like that? Can you do it again? Yes, I've got a thumbs up. I think we're, yeah, I think we can have one repetition given that we sailed through the first four so happily. Michael, would you play that one more time? <sighs> Very reminiscent of some kind of kids' TV theme tune, I fear. I can confirm that it is not a kids' TV <laughs> But you, you are welcome to reminisce about whatever the damn hell you please. I can confirm that song number one, which I think flummoxed at least a couple of you, was Feel Good Inc. by Gorillaz. Oh, yeah. Um, question number two, which I think flummoxed less of you, was Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. <sighs> Question all right. number three, by which point we were really having it as a group, was Push It by Salt and Pepper. Question number four, by which point we'd practically gone back to the bar to get another round in, was Blue Monday by New Order. And the fifth song, at which point we all retired home to watch some children's television, was All That She Wants by Ace of Bass. Oh, of course it was. Bloody hell. Fiona, you had your two... Yo, oh, he's tantalising her by playing that key riff all over again. Yeah. All right, let's say uh, thank you to our extremely talented guest, Michael, and his stylophone. Thank you. And... <laughs> and now that we've been waved at by a disembodied hand, let's see how that has affected the scores. Tom and Sam, we're going to do you first, actually. Let's see your answer sheet, please. Little up and down this round, I'm afraid. So you've, uh, so you've got Feel Good Inc. Gorillas. You've got Total Clips of the Heart, but you didn't put Bonnie Tyler. Nope. Is that third one, does it say Weezer? That's... that's uh, That would be great. It, it's a scribbled line over a new order where I had miss misprinted unfortunately oh heartbreak. that would be a big fat zero but then you did write new order for the next one but you didn't write blue monday and you wrote nothing for the fifth one so that's four out of ten fiona 
what do you have? It's Don't Know, Our Old Friend. <laughs> then it's Bonnie Tyler, <laughs> but don't have Total Eclipse of the Heart. But then we've got Push It by Salt and Pepper. Then we've got Blue Monday by New Order. Don't Know pops up again, but that can't harsh our buzz because you've got five points. Yay! Phil. Not a great one for me. Um, first up, I have Gorillas, but then I've written Feel Good. Will you give me oh. that? I hate being put in this kind of position as a quiz master. Um, I am going to give it to you, I think, because it's <gasps> so you. close. Thank you. So Gorillas Feel Good. Uh, second one, this starts going downhill real quick. Um, Bright Eyes. To be fair, that song could have a number of titles. Um, and mm. Dolly Parton, because that's the only one I could think of. And that was zero. <laughs> um, then Push It. I remember it's Push It. And, uh, but I've gone a really um, embarrassed myself with Run DMC for the guest of Artist. And then number four, I just went for I'm so close in both respects. How does it feel by Joy Division? And then uh, number five, Prodigy? Question mark because usually one of them's Prodigy. And so in total, that is three out of ten. I'd love to pile some more humiliation onto Phil, but he's basically done it all for us. <laughs> it's three out of ten. He's dead named New Order, <laughs> which is a terrible crime. <laughs> um, so what's that? What's that done to the scores? Oh, oh I'll tell you what. It's close. <laughs> you can do a technical rehearsal for a quiz over and over again. You can prepare some fantastic questions. You can even think through some lightning banter in advance. But you cannot fix a quiz to be as close as it currently is. This is the magic of the cup. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> with things. With, with barely a whisker in it, we move back to our final round, which is general knowledge. This is a five-question round. This round is out of nine points. But the first question is just for one point. In the TV quiz show Family Fortunes, what was the top answer to the question, name a popular subject at school? I can tell you as quiz master, you're not meant to have favourites, but this is my least favourite question in the quiz. Never reference a different quiz in a quiz. It's wheels within wheels. If you want to cut family fortunes out and just think of your favourite subject at school, that may be the best way to go about it. Question two. Which British university has the most students? This is actually quite a fun question, and it's quite a fun answer. What do I mean by that? Let's move on before anyone thinks about it too hard. Which high street chain, question three, has a mermaid on their logo? A few of our contestants struggling to remember what the high street is. <laughs> In happier times, January, February, maybe even the first couple of weeks of March, we'd have popped out and looked upon this mermaid and smiled, but it feels like a very long time ago. Question four. How many feet tall is a double bass? Um, Tom and Sam, I'm afraid to say I'm not acquainted with who plays what in air. Are either of you the bassist? No, we are not. We are not, I'm afraid. Uh, and our, our bassist... Oh, he does have a double bass, actually. He doesn't use it in the band, but um, he would be very useful right now. You've lived with the wrong band, mate. Luckily, question five is for five points. This is the big one. Name the five one syllable countries of the world. I'll give you a little bit longer for this because it's such a fun little mental exercise. You just want to be running through countries in your head and if they take a long time to say, you want to be chucking them in the bin immediately. <laughs> you think it was taller then? No, I swear, no, no, of course it isn't. Have you been still debating the height of a double bass well into the allotted time for the countries question? <laughs> <laughs> that seems incredibly ill-advised oh, Phil Wang has got all the countries of the world listed on his ceiling and he's just had a damn good look at them <laughs> Fiona how are you getting along um, not bad actually I'll have a quick read of a Q magazine from 2006 with cover stars the Red Hot Chili Peppers is that a, pay is, is, um, is that a point each it's a point for each. It's the big oh. beast at the end of round five. Okay. So, listen, I'm afraid we can't give you any more time to think of one-syllable countries, or indeed to muse on the height of a double bass. 
um, we are going to go through the answers. So the answers are, in family fortunes, the top answer to the question, name a popular subject at school, was P.E. Oh, <laughs> 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 a bunch of dumb jocks. A nation <laughs> obsessed with physical education. Question number two, which British university has the most students? If you're thinking of a geographical body, you're thinking wrong. It's the Open University. Did anyone get, did anyone get the Open University? I did. Yeah. But, uh, well done. No. I thought I were really picking me on there. Sorry, <laughs> I just a little mumbling there. <laughs> <laughs> Mumble away. Nobody's mumbling for question number three, though, surely. Question number three, which high street chain has a mermaid on their logo? It's everybody's <laughs> favorite or at least top five high street coffee chain. It's Starbucks. <laughs> Question four, and this one's all about Tom and Sam, who were debating this for some time. How many feet tall is a double base? Six feet. Exactly. God damn it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Phil, did you allow yourself I, to become bewitched I, I, by inches? I did. I did. Why? Oh, oh, I should no. have backed myself. I what? said six foot, and I said it's not going to be around six feet. No way. No, it, it's <sighs> as neat as it gets, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't meant to be the controversial one. This is the big boy. Name the five one syllable countries of the world. You want to have France. You'll be kicking yourself if you haven't written down France. You'll be kicking yourself if you haven't written down Spain. Spain. You'll be kicking yourself if you haven't written down Greece. Uh, but now we start to move further afield. Did you write down Chad? And did you yes. write down Lau? Very good. An excellent yes, question. I miss Lau. I went with Goa, which I don't think is a country. Hmm. We did write Lau down with the incorrect pronunciation in our head. So... But that's a, that's well, a moral no. defeat. But points-wise, you're looking good. Without any further ado, <laughs> we have reached the end of the quiz. So contestants, round up your points for uh, round five and reveal your totals. Phil, you're in the lead. So how many did you get out of nine? I got six. What did you put for the family fortunes answer? <laughs> maths. I was being hopeful. And we all love a bit of maths. And an open university, and Starbucks. And you six. went with the, uh, the double base being 6'4". Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it would be taller than me, but I guess not. And then, um, and then don't let this, the the uh, this um, cancelling out fool you. I had written Goa and then corrected it aloud, so then was afraid I'd be... Um, um, you'd say I was cheating, so put Goa back on. So then it's 6 out of 9. Oh, thank you, Phil. Uh, it's a very, very decent performance. Um, what about Tom and Sam from Air? How many did you get there? We opened with maths as well. Sadly, Hammond went for the correct answer being PE, and I shot him down and regret it now, obviously. Um, but thankfully, I think that was the only the only incorrect. Wow. Oh wow. Round. So actually it's a big eight overtaking big eight. Phil Wang. So it all <sighs> hangs. I lost. On Fiona Allen, uh, who's slightly ruined the jeopardy by announcing that oh, she's yes, lost. Sorry, but I, let's see I, how you lost and how badly. Um, well, okay, um, I got four. And okay, that's how I lost quite badly. There it is again, Manchester, never far from your mind. <laughs> uh, and uh, no mermaid attempt, but a you lovely six footer. I don't think it looks like a mermaid. I only just realised. <laughs> Well, you can take that up with the with the graphic designers over at Starbucks, but I'm afraid it's no use to you here. No. So it's one, so it's four for you in that round. So let's see what that does to the totals. I fear it's a victory for air. Unbelievable. Yeah. Once again, inheriting, this, inheriting a victory. I mean, we've we've scraped it there by the skin of our teeth, and feel like had we not, it would have been. Somewhat embarrassing being two heads rather than one. So thank you for sparing our blushes, both Phil and Fiona. Thank you for being so <laughs> modest gracious. in victory uh, and Phil in defeat. Fiona, do you have any final thoughts? It doesn't count because there's two of you, but well done. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> right, I take back everything I just said. <laughs> oh, well, I That's do the... mean that. Well done. I'm very pleased for you. <laughs> no, thank you very much. It's fine. Uh, That's the a, pleasure, a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and a pleasure to you, sir. <laughs> Get a zoom. Well, listen. Con <laughs> 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 uh, 
congratulations to Tom and Sam from Air, a worthy winner of today's first lock-in quiz. We hope that you at home have enjoyed it and played along. Uh, don't forget to follow my ticket on Twitter, uh, post your scores, and most importantly, tell your friends. We will be back on Facebook and YouTube on our channel, The Lock-In Quiz. We'll see you then. Good pub fade.